皆さんこんにちはひろきですご機嫌いかがでしょうか私は元気にしておりますさてさてテッドトークを字幕付きで楽しもうのコーナーです今回はいい大学になるためにはそしていい大学がなぜ問題なのかはい問題があるようですどういうことなんでしょう早速プレゼンテーションを聞いてみましょう Because I'm a college professor, I'm going to start with a pop quiz. I want you to think of the best college in the country, one that you would absolutely love to get into, one that would change your life completely. Okay, do you have it? I'm guessing if I went to the audience right now and asked a hundred different people which college they chose, I'd hear the same names. Over and over and over again. And that's because we have a huge problem in higher education. We say we want colleges to be more equitable, more transformational, more accessible. But we tend to obsess over a tiny group of colleges most of us could never get into. And it's not because we aren't smart enough, it's because there isn't enough space for all of us. These schools intentionally cap the number of students that they accept. It's why Akil Bello, an advocate for fairness in college admissions, calls them something else. They're not prestigious universities, they're highly rejective colleges. <laughs> Places like Harvard, Stanford, Yale, Princeton, MIT. And I'm not saying these schools are bad. They're obviously major research institutions. But our cultural obsession with a limited group of highly rejective colleges has major consequences. I'm the first person in my immediate family to graduate from college. <laughs> And Portland State University, a regional public university in Portland, Oregon, truly changed my life. But for a long time, when someone at a networking event asked me where I went to college, I worried that they judged my intellect and my aspirations when I answered. Now I research higher education to understand how our perceptions of which colleges are good shape important decisions we make about which schools to fund, donate to, attend, and send our children to. Regional public universities, or RPUs for short, are the exact opposite of highly rejective colleges. You can spot them because their name tells you which communities they serve. Western Colorado University, Northern Kentucky University, Eastern Washington University. In New York, they're the SUNY and the CUNY schools. In California, they're the 23 CSU campuses. They're called normal schools in China, Fauchulen in Germany, and provincial colleges in Canada and Italy. These are the universities that train the nurses. Who take care of you when you go to the hospital, the school teachers who educate your children, and the small business leaders that create jobs in your hometown. Regional public universities, or RPUs, pride themselves on accepting everyone or almost everyone who applies. And RPU students are more likely to be first generation college students like I was, students of color, low income students. Veterans and adults balancing work and family while going to school. And RPU students often don't have the test scores required to get into a highly rejective college, not because they aren't capable, but because they weren't given the same advantages as other students. My mother was a brilliant woman who had an eighth grade education. And she died when she was just 43 years old of a totally preventable asthma attack. 
because she lived in a rural remote community and lacked access to health care. I grew up in poverty and my test scores were lower because I prepared for the SATs by showing up on test day with a sharpened number two pencil and a calculator rather than taking expensive test prep courses. People sometimes talk about regional public universities in negative ways by calling some the 13th grade or saying anyone can get in as if that's a bad thing or saying they're not real universities. But shouldn't colleges be judged by how many people they include and raise to the same level of academic excellence rather than by how many people they exclude? by how well they address the pressing challenges facing their local communities. Take Adams State University in southern rural Colorado. 38% of the university's students are Latinx, and half are first in their families to go to college. This is Colorado's most affordable university, and it's one of just a few in the entire country to offer graduate degrees to students who are currently incarcerated and working to change their lives. It contributes $83.5 million each year to the local economy. Regional public universities like Adams State University generate more upward mobility than any other type of college. But you'll never find it on a list of America's most prestigious universities and it doesn't get the funding it deserves. Ironically, the colleges that already have the largest endowments tend to receive the biggest charitable donations. Recently, Michael Bloomberg gave Johns Hopkins University a donation of $1.8 billion. And this is an incredibly generous gift. But before the donation, Johns Hopkins had an endowment of $3.8 billion. And it rejects 89% of all students who apply. By contrast, Adams State University, which prides itself by accepting the top 99% of students, has an endowment of just $63,000. Not million, not billion, $63,000, shockingly low. Now, Johns Hopkins produces vital research, but let's imagine if Michael Bloomberg had spread that donation across the 430 RPUs in the country, each would have received $4 million. Now imagine if your net worth went from being $63,000 to $4 million. Your life would be pretty different, wouldn't it? Unfortunately, the government only makes this issue worse. In the United States and throughout the world, far more public funding goes to highly rejective colleges than to regional public universities. Because of this, RPUs have become more expensive, which hurts low-income students and has caused student loan debt to skyrocket. If I were 18 years old right now, I honestly don't know if I could afford to go to college, given how much tuition has increased and how little public funding has kept up. If we really want more low-income students to go to college, if we really want equity in higher education, we need to put our money where our mouth is and fund regional public universities. Now, many of us have been on the receiving end of calls from our alumni association, and I don't think the ink was dry on my diploma when my phone rang. For my generous friends who may have gone to a highly rejective college, and don't worry, I'm not mad at you, <laughs> but instead of giving to your alma mater, which is probably already very wealthy, consider giving it to the colleges that really need it to the RPUs that truly serve their communities. Last year, billionaire philanthropist Mackenzie Scott gave $1.5 billion to 73 different colleges and universities that serve low-income students 
and students of color. Xavier University of Louisiana, maybe not a household name, but did you know that they send more black graduates to medical school than any other college in the country? She gave them $20 million, and guess what? That was the largest gift they had ever received. And that was true for most of the schools on her list. Places like Long Beach City College, the University of Central Florida, CSU Northridge, many of these schools are regional public universities that so rarely get large donations that her gift was transformative. There's no better way than to make, to make a difference in higher education than to give to the colleges that change the lives of their students and communities. But this isn't all about money. We all have the power to change the way we think about and talk about regional public universities or stop people when they frame them in negative ways. So when you hear someone saying, oh, anyone can get into that school, push them on why that's a bad thing. You don't have to be rude about it. You could just say, wow, that's amazing that that school gives so many people the opportunity to go to college. I'm living proof that no matter where you were born or how much money your parents have, you should have the opportunity to go to a college that supports your growth and fosters your dreams. When we change the way we define prestige and fund regional public universities, we will make higher education equitable once and for all. Thank you. はい、いかがでしたでしょうか。教育格差の問題でした。日本にも同じような格差があります。確実にあります。はい。ただ、日本では親が大学の授業料を払うという習慣みたいなものがあるため。えー、大学に行かせるのは親の責任というかまあ大学に行かなかったら行きたいのに行けなかったらだ、えー、親の責任と言われがちなところがありますがアメリカは違いますはいアメリカでは皆さん奨学金ローンを組んで卒業していく方が貧困層には多いですはいそこにあの先ほどのプレ,プレゼンテーションの内容にあったような寄付があれば、えー、皆さんが大学を卒業した後社会人になっても社会人になってた楽しみたいと思っていたことができずにただただローンの返済に追われて青春時代を通り過ぎてしまうということが減らせるかもしれません、はい、非常に感じ入りました、はい、日本も同じような問題を抱えつつあると思います大変いい勉強になりました。次回もまた一緒に勉強しましょう。今回の配信は以上となります。また次の配信、または別の配信でお会いしましょう。さようなら。